This part one of the series, we are going to remove the motor from the truck. Now, if you are pulling a motor from something that's not a 1.6 diesel, maybe you have a gas motor, there's going to be a few added steps, but this is going to cover the main process of pulling the engine and transmission out. If you have a gas motor, then you'll have extra stuff like the air box with the fuel lines and the injectors and everything. Um, that stuff's not really hard to do, so I'm not going to cover that maybe on down the road, uh, just use your brain. You'll be able to figure it out because uh, if you're going to attempt a project this big in scope, you've got some kind of mechanical abilities already. And then the next we are going, after this is pulled, we are going to move on to prep up the motor and then we'll work on putting it all back together. All right, we are going to start on the passenger side of the motor to start freeing everything up. We are going to take the fuel filter and fuel filter bracket off. That will give us room to get down to the exhaust clamps. So first, on this particular one, we're going to take a 19 mil and we are going to remove the fuel line off the top. We are going to watch out for our washers on either side of the banjo bolt. We're going to set that on the engine itself. Now we are going to remove the back one also washing out for the washers on it. There is a washer on either side of the banjo bolt. Now that that's good, we're going to take a 13 millimeter and then we will watch out for the washers and pull the fuel filter assembly off, putting our washers back with our nuts on so that we don't have to worry about losing those or keeping track of them. And then remove the fuel return line. And set it off to the side because we will use the same lines and filter assembly when we put the new motor back in. So that is most of it for the side minus the exhaust clamps, which we will get to next. We are going to take the accelerator cable off, it simply pops off. There is a grommet on the stand that you just need to wiggle it around and it will eventually come out of there. Sometimes you can put a little lube on this, a little silicone spray, spray lube to help that come off early, easier. Now we're going to remove this bracket. Some intakes have this, some intakes have a flat one that snakes all the way around. And now we are going to do the hard part of removing the cold start cable, which is this cable right here. On the back side of the pump between the number one and number two injectors are, is the screw for the cold start advanced cable. Get a properly sized flathead screwdriver, loosen that up three or four turns so that the cables will slide out freely. Next, we have to get the clip that attaches the cable to the pump itself. There is a small clip here. I like to use a pair of bit nose pliers, to, long, long handle bit nose pliers, I'm going to clarify, to grab the clip on the side and pull up and out so that you don't drop the clip. Now the cable is free and we should be able to remove it. The cable should now be free, and with a little bit of wiggling, we'll come right out. Be careful of the washer that is on the end, and if you want to, you can go ahead and clip the clip back on there so that it keeps this nice and safe. Now we are going to use an eight millimeter to remove the, the lead for the glow plug harness. Just loosen it up, take the nut off by hand, remove the cable, and once again, put the nut back on the stud so that we do not have to worry about losing the nut. Next, we are going to use an eight mil, the same eight mil, and take the nut off for the fuel cutoff solenoid. We will remove the lead and put the nut back on the stud. Right, now just leave, it, just leave it going.
Now your pump may have switches on this bracket here. Um, this pump did at one time, but the pump has been switched out at some time. This actually looks like it's been rebuilt. Uh, just go ahead and unplug those switches too if you have them there. So now most of the engine wiring is removed except for the coolant plugs and we'll get to that next. Now we have the oil and the coolant temperature probes. Go ahead and disconnect those. You might want to go ahead and label these. I encourage labeling everything when you are doing a motor swap. So pull those off. You can label them and then scoot them out of the way. And the only connection we have left electrically on the motor is the alternator. Next we are going to remove the plug from the back of the alternator. Sometimes there is a little retainer clip on the back of the alternator that you need to pry off with a screwdriver. This one doesn't have it. And occasionally there will be a ground wire on one of these alternator studs for better grounding. Uh, remove that also if you have that. Next we will remove the plug from the back of the fan. And then we will loosen the hose clamp, which I've already done, on the brake booster supply and pull that off. Sometimes these can be tricky because they like to glue themselves to the fittings. All right, we are going to loosen and remove the battery now, which can be done in the beginning if you want to. Then a 13 mil if your car still has the tie down. 13 mil on an extension will remove the battery tie down. Now we just simply lift off the battery. All right, next we are going to drain the coolant out of the motor. We are going to do this in two a uh, two-step process. First, we are going to loosen the lower radiator hose. And then once that is all drained, we are going to remove the thermostat flange and the thermostat and drain the coolant out of the motor too. Uh, you want to be careful in this spot because you will get coolant everywhere. It will cover you and you will make a mess. So we're going to slide that clamp out of the way. Kind of break the seal. And as you can see, I've already started to make a mess. So we will just carefully try to drain the coolant from the system. Another tip to do is remove the cap off of the radiator or the coolant tank. And next we're going to take the two 10 mils off of the flange housing. Now a lot of times you can remove this flange and the thermostat will still stay in place like it's going to here. So you can get everything out of the way, hold your bucket up, and then pry the thermostat out of the way, releasing all of your coolant. Now that the radiator has been fully drained and we have a pan underneath the thermostat and the low radiator hose, we are going to remove the hose from the coolant bottle, the return hose. We're going to loosen the hose clamp and remove the top radiator hose. And then on the side, you will have a switch for your thermostat fan housing or for your fan control so we unplug that also. Now we're going to remove the clip that holds the radiator into place. It might be slightly different on some cars um, and the radiator is loose. Some vehicles may have bolts in the bottom bolting the radiator down. This one does not so we simply lift up on the radiator and set it to the side. Next we are going to unscrew the clamp on the hose on the side of the head. And then once that is done, we are going to remove it. And then I do the clamp on this heater hose and then remove those. That leaves us with one hose left for the reservoir. And we will go ahead and take it loose from right here. And that has the whole coolant system disconnected from the vehicle. If you want to, you can go ahead and pull up on the coolant bubble and take it out as well. After the cooling system is completely disconnected, we are going to disconnect the last of the electrical system. That is a 13 millimeter on the starter bolt here, which will remove this cable. I'm plugging the starter wire that actually goes to the switch. And then we will get the ground wire here. Make sure that you put your bolts back on because we don't want to lose those or put your nuts back on. And now the ground that goes to the motor. Same process here. 
Now we are going to remove the clutch cable. For that, we just have a standard pry bar and we are going to hook it under the lip of the arm, slightly raise it up and you will pull out on the clip there. It simply slides in over the wire. There's a ball on the bottom that sits in that groove that it catches in. The lever will go down all the way and then you can pull the clutch cable out. Now we are going to take the C-clips off that hold the exhaust manifold to the downpipe. This is the clamp here. It is C-shaped, looks kind of like that. And it goes around the exhaust manifold and pinches the two together. We're going to take a pry bar, wedge it in there and simply pop it off. So I have a pry bar on the bottom of the clamp and I'm going to attempt to pull out on it. Sometimes these go on off easy, sometimes they don't. So you'll have to spend some time working it off of there. They actually have a special tool uh, to remove them that nobody ever has, and a pry bar works just fine. Once you get the one off, the other side is easier. Now it's time to do the speedometer cable, and on the back side right behind the reverse light mount where the um, cable goes in the transmission. There's a 10 millimeter bolt. I have seen this as a Phillips bolt in the past um, and I've seen it as an 11 millimeter bolt in the past. So we will take that bolt out. Once that bolt is out, we will pull up on the cable and retract the speedometer gear set. Okay, just simply reach back there, wiggle it and pull the whole gear set out. These are known to get very stuck in there with age. So you may have to take some time and patience with it, but just move it out of the way with everything else. And we are on to the shift linkage. This upper bar here has small wire clips that can be removed with a pair of pliers. So there is one there and then there is one back behind the motor that comes off of the steering linkage or the steering uh, bar. So you can remove that, set it out of the way with the clips put the clips back in it. And now the second one. The second one is harder to see. It is farther back on the transmission and it is secured into place. Along the back it has small catches that you can use a flathead screwdriver. And once I get the bar removed, I will show you so that you have a better view of it. This is the back bar of the shift linkage. You can see how it has these little tabs. They loop over and clip. So what you're going to do is just simply take a screwdriver and pop them loose like that so you can remove them from the ball. Set that aside and now the shift linkage is done. Okay, now we are going to start taking the axles out. First thing we're going to do is remove the ball joint. This one here happens to be 11 millimeters. So we'll zip all three of these out. All right, now we are going to remove the axles this side is replacement axle and is a six millimeter Allen. And this side is still factory and it is a 12 point, a triple square. Now you can find these triple squares at AutoZone. They normally come like this. Uh, it fits on a standard 13 mil socket, but I have some that you can see where I've taken and I've ground down the sides of it so that it slides in a little bit better on the boots. So we're going to take this side off with the ball joint unbolted, we're going to pull that back out of the way. And then we're going to do this axle. And this one usually has enough play in it that it will come free by itself. So the first thing that you want to do is take a pick and make sure that all the dirt and schmutz is out of the inside of the Allens. Then take your socket firmly seated in. And then if you really want to be extra careful, take a hammer or something else, or even the ratchet itself and beat it on in. You want to make sure that you have a good firm seat so that you don't twist them out. And a lot of times you can hold the axle and break them free or if you have slotted rotors, this one doesn't, you can take and drive a screwdriver in between the slots on the brake caliper and that will hold them in place. So we're going to rotate around, loosen every single one of them up and then we are going to, then we're going to remove the axle. Now that all the bolts are out, we're going to spin it and knock it free. And now that it is free, we are going to pull it out of the way, break stuff, and it will give us time or more room to get the motor out. 
If you aren't doing this on a lift like we are, you can go ahead and take this axle out and put the ball joint back in. But we have a lift because we're cool. Now on to the other side. All right, with both axles loose, we are going to take this rear mount off. It is 119 and 217. So we'll zip the, the 17s off. And then the 19. Now we are going to take the front mount loose and we are going to start with removing the two eight millimeter bolts that attach the starter. Now with both starter bolts removed, we will wiggle the starter free and remove it. Now you see how easy the motor rocks back and forth. We're going to attach our load leveling bar or chains if you don't have one. And then we are going to apply pressure with our lift and take both bolts out and remove the motor. All right, so here we have the uh, load leveler hooked up to the two lift points on the motor. There's also a lift point way down on the transmission that you can use too. I like using this with my cheapo Harbor Freight lift um, load leveler. And we will now take out both remaining bolts and attempt to remove it. This is a single 17 mil, so we are going to take it out. Sometimes they get stuck, so you will need to use some penetrant oil on it. And once that is free, we will remove the rest of the front mount and then transition over to the passenger side mount to be ready to remove the motor. Okay, now we are going to take the 217 mil off of the front motor housing. And then we will, after these two bolts are removed, we will go ahead and drop this whole front mat, leaving just one bolt left. All right, both, both bolts are removed and the mount has been removed as well. Here's the last mount bolt. I find it works good to have a 17 mil with a three inch extension. And you reach around the back and just sometimes these can also can be a real pain. This one's usually the hardest one. Uh, I don't know why this one rusts up as much, but you're going to completely remove the bolt. Uh, make sure that you have tension on the lift by now. You should have had it already, especially when removing the first mountain bolt over there. And once this bolt is removed, we will pull the engine. And now we are going to pull it out from the top for one piece. We are going to tilt it this way, and that's what the load level is real good for. If you just have a chain, you kind of have to manhandle it around. Uh, so we are going to attempt to pull the engine. All right, go ahead and raise it. You also want to make sure that you have everything disconnected first. So give it one last check. I should have said that. Um, so check everything and then try to do it again. We decided on this one, it'd be better to take the alternator off. And now the engine is out and we will lift it up the rest of the way and prepare for the AAZ. So there you have it. That's the motor removal in a Mark I. It applies to Caddy, Jetta, Scirocco, Rabbit. Wasn't that hard of a deal. It took us probably three and a half hours to do this and that's with taking the video and redoing everything and running out of battery. So if you work real hard out, you can probably do it in about two and a half, three hours yourself. Now, one thing that I would note, it would probably be easier if you remove the passenger side or the driver's side transmission mount. We didn't do it initially because it was really stuck on there and we were halfway through the process when we thought about it. So after you get both the driver's side and the passenger side frame rail mounts loose, I would go ahead and then take off the driver's side transmission mount to make it easier to get up and out of there and maybe take off the alternator, depends on how your setup goes. So thank you very much. This is Ryan Turner from VWDiesel.net. I hope you enjoyed the first part of our Caddy AAZ build and have a nice day.